Today in the soybean market, it finally turned up and to double digits. The optimism uh, that trade talks uh, may resume has really, you know, sparked a little bit of buying in that uh, soybean market, as well as the idea that maybe Japan's going to step in and get something. There's been an interesting kind of statistic, too, that the uh, uh, on-feed report on the cattle side has reported that the, it's been the largest since 1996. Uh, that bodes well for all the grains across the board and might, you know, increase some of these, uh, some of the feed uh, uh, from you know, uh, from the soybean side, could it be some of the meal, maybe even some of the oil? But it's pro uh, definitely adding to the support of the market. But we're going to wait and see if there's any more news that's coming out of the White House. Corn was steady today. Uh, uncertainty is just holding the market uh, really firm and kind of moving sideways right now. That uh, announcement about Japan, as I said earlier, uh, really ca had no effect. We expected to get a little bit of a pop out of corn. It didn't really come. Uh, definitely just staying with the uh, with the soybeans was where the real rally came. But uh, the other thing is to think about is a lot of the funds, the fund managers are selling some of this corn. And so that could be definitely counteracting anything bullish, any bullish news that's uh, coming out right now. And I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of si sideways movement. Perhaps we do have some underlying support as well that's keeping the market from really falling over the edge. Now, wheat was mixed today. Uh, the harvest delays definitely stalled the futures and, and any movement. Uh, the funds do remain short across the complex, meaning Minneapolis and Kansas City as well as Chicago. But uh, commercials are staying a bit longer, so that could be countering that market as well. And that's why we have a little bit of a mixed bag on both sides. But we got to watch out for Australia right now because there is some dryness that's possibly threatening that crop. Uh, that could be a factor down the road, so we're going to keep an eye on that. We are uh, at the start of the last week of August. That's psychologically kind of the end of the summer right ahead of the Labor Day weekend. So there could be a little bit of a bouncy market uh, as the next five days a, a, as we see it. So we're going to be watching that closely as well as anything that's coming out of news that there's going to be a resolution or even talks about that with China.